Good evening and welcome to everyone that's joined us to the early birds for tonight's webinar. Hi everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's enjoying this year so far. You guys are well on to uh, the second term of 2024. My uh, my wife, actually recent wife, um, we got married about a month and a half ago. She's an early childhood teacher in Cape Town. Um, she's been a teacher for over four years now, qualified. Um, and uh, yeah, wow, it's uh, it's surprising. It's also quite surprising that uh, some of her kids are still walking. Uh, <laughs> that can really drive a teacher up the wall. But uh, what I can say is, is that I take my hat off to each and every one of you as teachers to do what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Hey, Liz. Hey, Daphne. Lareko. Susan. Guys, pop your names in the chat. Say hi. We want to hear from all of you. Give us a... Hi, Erica. Amanda. Give us a good, a good evening. Hello, 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 hello. Morning, and let us Empire. know where you are, where you're based, where, you guys where around from? the world are you from? Hey, Douglas. Douglas from South Africa, Pink from Cape Town. Oh, we've got Philippines in the house here, Ethiopia. Botswana, nice. Derbs. Robertson, love Robertson. Nairobi, hey, Kenya. <laughs> oh, Robertson's incredible. Hey, Stephanie. Kim, Brackpan, that's where Sean's from. I was actually born, no, I was born in Benoni. Family <laughs> lived in Brackpan. Interesting place in the world. <laughs> but East London, Liz, good evening. The numbers are looking great, guys. We've got 145 teachers that um, have joined the webinar tonight. Uh, we're kicking off in three minutes, and Sean will take the floor, tell you what he's been up to over the past few months. Um, but we're expecting a large turnout, and it's just testament to um, the feeling uh, amongst the teaching community. You know, uh, South Africa is not delivering uh, for our amazing teachers um, from a salary perspective, job security perspective. Um, and that's why we do what we do. We want to help you guys explore new horizons abroad. And uh, I mean, Sean, some of our teachers are earning three times what they're earning in in, in South Africa. Well, I mean, if you consider what's, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll look at the last five placements. I mean, we've placed 84 teachers this year alone. Uh, but we talk about the last five placements. Uh, each of them are earning between the brackets of 95 and 120,000 Australian dollars per annum. You know, those teachers, if I look at what they were earning in South Africa, that was earning anywhere between 20 and 35,000 Rand a month. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's difficult to really compare because the salaries in Australia have become so, so attractive. Uh, for most of you that don't actually know this, and, and I'll get to the point of why there's such a demand and, you know, why teachers are actually earning so much money in Australia is the mere fact that there's just such a massive demand. You know, um, I, I was doing some research just the other day in preparation of this webinar this evening, and um, the uh, unprecedented teacher shortage in Australia has hit an all-time high. It's, it's a record. Australia, um, in... 30, 40 years of them bringing foreign skilled labor across to build the economy, they've never faced such a shortage. Um, and, and I'll get into the reasons why. But by 2025, so by the end of next year, so that gives us a year and a half, where Australia is looking to bring in over 4,000 high school teachers. Yeah. That's just high school teachers. Right. Um, and the demand is across the board. I mean, you go from early childhood, special needs, primary school, middle school, high school, university lecturers. 
Um, but at least for most of you in tonight's room um, that have qualified for a B-Ed or, or PGCE in either foundation phase or intermediate to senior or senior, um, there, there, is, uh, there is a huge demand. But sure, really it looking goes forward to getting into this. It goes above the earnings. We got guys. We're going to start now. Just a minute left. Um, but it, as I was, it goes above the earnings, it's like it means more. Like in terms of just the level of appreciation for the trade. You know, you know that your government, you know that the, you know your local government, your federal government are looking at your trade, your occupation, and taking it seriously and paying you as much as doctors and lawyers because that's exactly what it is. You know, that's our, our teachers are our most precious. Um, um, you know, they, they hold the, the, the future in their hands for our children. And, and it's, a, it's, it's a place where you're respected. Um, unlike South Africa, where, you know, it, it's, it doesn't, it's not as prominent, you know, um, which is unfortunate because we all love the country, but, you know. Yeah. And Australia understands, you know, as, as still also a very young country in comparison to Europe, the US, it's still a very young country. Um, yeah. and, and they understand the value of what a teacher does now for a, a, a class of students and how that would benefit the economy in 10, 20, 30 years time from now. Um, you know, it, it, it becomes a snowball effect for the economy and, and a very strong growing economy, you know, to say the least. And, and you know, what teachers do, I mean, it's just uh, you can't put to words. You really can't, you know. Um, if you also, interesting fact though, before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, an interesting fact is an entry level teacher, and you can Google this, um, you know, don't, don't take my word for it, but an entry level teacher earns more than an entry level doctor, an engineer, as well as a lawyer. It's unheard of. In Australia, it's heard of. Hmm. Guys, so. Um... Um, most of you um, have been speaking to um, our consultants at NWI. So we've all got um, an array of, 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 of prospects, um, teachers that we're busy working with. Some of you are working with Jamal. Some of you are working with Nicole Heinzer, Nicole Fanta, Zakir, Thomas. Um, and um, yeah, so... Sean will give you some guidance at the end of the webinar as to who to approach to further your your inquiry and to take things forward. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to give them a shout out. They, they are in the crowd somewhere. So how's it, guys? Um, and if I've, if I've left anyone out, please forgive me. Um, but yeah, over to Sean. Uh, you can take it away. Thank you, Robbie. And again, ladies and gentlemen, with over 200 participants and the numbers climbing, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us. Those of you are parents, those of you are obviously teachers. You've had a long, busy day. I'm sure many of you are probably still going to go back to marking after this webinar. So we have designed this webinar to keep it short, straight to the point, and uh, give you the exact points of what this webinar is looking to deliver and it's to advance your teaching career in Australia. So without further ado, I'm going to continue with the slideshow this evening, an expert guide on how you as a teacher can successfully advance your career down under. So Sean, you can pop that into full mode uh, like we did earlier. It's just in editing mode. Uh, let's get back here. Can everyone view that now? It's the same. It's the same as it's editing. It's not in full. Hold on. Excuse me. There we go. Beautiful. All right. Perfect. So again, the numbers are climbing. Again, those that um, that have just joined. My name is Sean Kupferberg. I'll be your host for this webinar this evening. Um. Look, you, those of you that may know me, might not know me, there's a slight little brief on, on uh, my background and my career in immigration as well as recruitment. Uh, but it's been a humble journey over the last 10 and a half years that I've been in the industry. Um, I've assisted a better part of 300 teachers that have immigrated successfully to Australia. Uh, we've just recently placed our 85th teacher uh, this week, and uh, the numbers are simply climbing because of the demand across Australia. 
it's, it's been a humbling journey over the last 10 and a half years to also assist a better part of 3,000 families overall to immigrate successfully to Australia. I could never have done it without a team that backs me like New World Immigration. Um, it, it, it really has been an incredible journey. But my real passion really lies in, and, and it's the, the, the emotions behind what I do really goes home. And I understand what a teacher does on a day-to-day -day basis. And I was saying earlier on the value uh, and the remarkable value that a teacher's touch and, and value has on a student, you know, from early childhood to high school, how that enables and, and um, embodies a, a movement of success, drive, and love for the passion of whatever that person or child wants to do in their career down the line, you know, whether they choose to become an engineer or a teacher themselves or even a business owner, you know, there's a lot of value that, um, that teachers that, you know, it's, uh, you, you can't really put to words. So there's been a huge amount of passion that I've developed, um, in this industry because of teachers. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be covering a couple of topics, um, this evening, touching off with uh, understanding the demand for teachers. Um, why there is a demand. Uh, we're also going to be covering a few vacancies that we have available. Uh, we've got over 84 vacancies. No, I said that's amount of teachers we place. We've got over, say about just over 80 vacancies currently where we're looking to place teachers in the third as well as the fourth term uh, in the schools that we've partnered with as a recruiter. So we're just going to be touching on a couple of the vacancies, not all of them. I wish I could fit them all into one screen, but uh, it would be quite overwhelming. We're also going to be touching on a few success stories, um, a few of the families that we've um, gotten over recently. Uh, we're going to be touching on salary expectations, a very interesting topic that we were touching on earlier on. And then the most important thing, what do I do? You know, where, where do I start? Uh, what steps do I need to take? to eventually get myself into the job market and where's job opportunity available, et cetera. So starting off with this particular topic, why is Australia experiencing a shortage of te teachers? So there are two reasons for that. The first reason, ladies and gentlemen, is post COVID, a new government was elected in Australia. They quickly realized that there is a huge amount or percentage of teachers that are going into retirement due to the baby boom effect that took place in the 50s. So, of course, with all these teachers now going into retirement, it's creating a major gap within the employment market where Australia, unfortunately, is unable to fill that gap with local qualified teachers qualifying through domestic universities. So, unfortunately, that gap's growing. With the amount of investment that's going on in Australia, the amount of schools that are being built, um, I work with a construction company where I place a lot of quantity surveyors, plumbers, electricians as well in, in Queensland and Victoria, and they build government and, and private schools in Australia. And the rate at which the government is looking to build schools, they simply do not have enough teachers to tend to the amount of new schools that are opening, the new vacancies that are opening up. So these are the two main reasons as to why um, there's such a demand. And what the government is looking to accomplish is to open up foreign skilled labor on a mass scale, essentially, to bring in as many teachers to fill their demand. I was saying earlier on that Australia is looking to bring in 4,000 high school teachers by the end of 2025. You try and fathom that number for a couple of seconds. It's uh, it's massive. 4,000 teachers. Big number. So just a couple of the um, vacancies we have available here. We've actually just recently placed a teacher in Wagga Wagga. Um, it's a small regional. I wouldn't say small, but it's a regional town. Um, salary compensation, as you see, there's anywhere between eighty-five and one hundred and twenty-nine thousand dollars per annum. And why there's such a big sort of bracket or, or, or large scale bracket between the two is depending on work experience. So if you've got between one and three years, 
you'll look at X amounts if you've got between, you know, three and five years, X amounts and so on and so forth. Many of the vacancies and most of the demand for teachers you would find would be in Victoria and New South Wales, which is on your east coast of Australia. Now, if you take a look at some of those vacancies, you're covering primary school, you're covering high school. Uh, we've also got health and PE teachers. And then um, there are a number of professions that we're also covering now. We've got arts, we've got, gosh, what else? Um, there are also um, foreign languages such as French. So many of you that are French teachers, I recognize many of the names that we've actually brought on board as French speaking teachers. So uh, welcome this evening. And uh, Spanish teachers, there are a number of Mandarin roles as well. Those of you that are looking to teach Mandarin in Australia. The point I'm trying to get to is, is that the subject that you teach, unfortunately, besides Afrikaans, which isn't um, a major subject being taught in Australia for obvious reasons, um, I wish it was, and it probably will be down the line. Um, if you're looking for a subject and a classroom or a school that matches your background, I can assure you Australia has enough vacancies for you to find them. So in the beginning of 2024, we um, started with 12 placements. So there were 12 families that we placed in Australia, which they then entered Australia uh, for their first term, which is the 21st of January of this year. And the family on your left-hand side of the screen, Nelly, a beautiful family from, um, from Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, we we uh, managed to place her in a family in Sydney. They are at a school called Red Bend. Uh, I do a lot of work for them, place a lot of teachers through Red Bend. It is an absolutely beautiful Christian school. Uh, we are their main agent to uh, to place um, teachers at that school. And then Simon Skippers, those of you that actually watched a webinar that we hosted toward the end of the year, um, Simon Skippers, her husband and the young daughter arrived in Melbourne. Uh, and that's the family on the right-hand side. I'm regularly in contact with all of the families that we place in Australia, but these are uh, two families that I'm regularly in contact with that help a lot of the teachers that we place with things like um, understanding schools and understand, understanding uh, you know, um, the schools for the kids, not, not necessarily where they're going to be placed, but schools for their kids. Um, things like... Um, teacher registration. So, you know, as you would ha you have SACE registration in South Africa, you would have independent registrations in every state, which my team, as well as the clients that I've gotten into Australia, the teachers that I've gotten into Australia would help you as well. And they're absolutely loving it. Both of these families help many of the teachers that I've brought on board and will continue to bring on board to help them with the necessary support and guidance um, from whatever it is that comes to mind. They really are um, a helpful team. So looking at a few interesting points here and salary expectations. So your entry-level teacher can earn approximately $81,000 per annum and upward. Depending on location and years of work experience and the type of school, that is the general expectation or salary expectations and, and how the, of course, salary expectation would increase depending on work experience, et cetera, as it's, as, as, as it's mentioned there. But you will see that an entry-level teacher would earn anything from $81,000 per annum and upward. At least for most of you teachers, You'd be in the area of senior to highly accomplished teacher. So the bracket between senior, which is 113 to about $126,000 per annum. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're asking yourselves if you're going to be living a good lifestyle in Australia, I can assure you with good spending habits, you can without a doubt live a good lifestyle. 
Um, why I say good spending habits, we all have different spending habits. Um, you know, some of you like to eat out often or travel often, drive, you know, fancy cars or live in um, posh areas. Obviously, it would um, increase your 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 monthly expenses. But in saying that, teachers earn amongst some of the highest professionals in Australia. And then, of course, as time goes by, <clears throat> and as you build your career, you start earning more, and you'll also come across something called super. So, superannuation is similar to a pension fund or Provident Fund that we have here in South Africa. I know they have something similar in Kenya and perhaps in Asia, they might have something similar to that. But in Australia, you get your base salary and then you get something known as super or superannuation. And that is anything from 8% of your annual salary on top of what you're getting paid. So if you're getting paid $126,000 per annum, the school will pay you in addition to that, a superannuation, which is a pension fund, anything from 8% um, of your salary, annual salary. Beside that, schools can also offer uh, relocation packages. We've just recently placed four teachers at a school in Melbourne, west of, um, of Melbourne. Uh, it's about a three and a half hour drive from Melbourne um, CBD, or the, the metropole of Melbourne. Um, of Victoria, and uh, each teacher has been offered ten thousand dollars as a relocation allowance, moving to Australia. So, of course, there are a number of steps that you need to get to the point of being accepted and getting access into an interview room, or even being acknowledged by a school. But um, as an example, these four teachers uh, were offered ten thousand uh, dollar relocation allowances. And then you've also got schools that offer accommodation. Some schools offer months assistance of accommodation. Some schools go as high as six months um, worth of, of accommodation where you don't pay for accommodation. And then, you know, a travel allowance, you know, so not every single employer is going to offer the same. They'll offer different packages depending on the school's budget. <clears throat> Another successful story. This is very close to our hearts. And um, in fact, Carlos, our IT manager, who um, put the slide together as well as uh, got each and every one of you into this room this evening. Uh, it's a very close friend of his um, that he introduced me to in beginning of November of 2023. We um, placed her in the middle of December. We got their visas granted and they then moved to Australia on the 20th of January for her to start her first day um, at the school. And a, a brief little note she left us there. It has been a real pleasure working with them. And a big thanks to Debbie Down, which I work with um, daily with all teachers that are immigrating to Australia. She's one of our head case managers that uh, help process the paperwork for our teachers. I'm going to be covering a couple of the steps that a teacher would go through now that there's a demand for teachers and where you would go to start this journey. <clears throat> so your first point would need to be understand whether or not you qualify. Don't attempt trying to get into the job market without going through relevant steps, which I'm going to be going through with you now you will find yourself, unfortunately, hitting the wall a number of times and it creates a lot of frustration within the job markets and really trying to secure a job. Um, you can go into Seek, you can go into Indeed, you can go into all these wonderful sites where they've got a couple thousand vacancies th throughout Australia and you keep applying, keep applying, keep applying and um, nothing comes through. I think that's one of the most frustrating things that anyone can experience within the job market. Ladies and gentlemen, we're also talking about the international job market here as well. 
The international job market works a little bit differently to your local markets, whether you're in Cape Town or Durban or Singapore or wherever you're based. Works a little bit different. It is still a very competitive market. So although there's still a big demand for teachers, it's still a very competitive market. You need to put yourself in the most competitive position possible and start off by getting yourself work ready once you found out that you qualify. So the first thing is, is that you'd need to start the teaching portfolio with an agent. Now, New World Immigration and our team would facilitate and help a teacher understand the documentation requirements we need, the English test results that we require, and we compile and submit all this paperwork to a board in Australia to essentially get you recognized. You're no longer seen as a foreign teacher, put it that way. Your second step, which is a step that I would help you with, as well as one of the families that I've um, gotten to Australia, they'd be able to help you with this as well. Registration as a teacher in Australia. Every state has a different registration board. So for an example, um, in Victoria, you've got something known as the Victorian Institute of Teaching, so VIT. Queensland has their own independent one, Western Australia, New South Wales, and the list goes on. We'll help you with that. One cannot register without having your teaching portfolio. Step three, this is now when the recruitment journey starts. This is when you start applying for vacancies through our recruiter. I am the head recruiter at New World Immigration for teachers, and I would then be able to now effectively start assisting you and getting you into the job market. But ladies and gentlemen, it's not about just finding work. I want to make something very clear and when you look at an economy like South Africa, there's very few job opportunities with so many people that are qualified looking for work. Australia is very different. There's a lot of opportunity with not as many people qualifying for those roles or qualified for those roles itself. When you're applying for vacancies and when I'm helping you find work, I need to make sure that there's longevity with you and the employer. I'm not going to try and place you at the first school I come across. That school might not match your background. That school might not match or have synergy with your personality. Or your personality might not match that school. It takes us a very long time to build up a database and network of great schools, which we have successfully done over the years. But when we get you into the job market, we start placing you and putting you in front of schools where you will have longevity, you will have career growth. And when your family goes over with you, you have stability. I think one of the most important things when I placed Nelly and when I placed Simon, um, you know, when we placed Sandra this week, when... Um, Chimera that we placed two weeks ago, uh, you know, a few of the teachers and and uh, and their families, they come to mind. We think of their background. We think of what it is that they're looking to do, the schools that they're looking to engage with, the personalities that they have, and there must be synergy. But also, most importantly, stability. Most of the families I'm getting over have children. Well, most of the teachers I have um, have children. I want to ensure that there's going to be stability for the family. I'm looking at the kids that are going over. I'm looking at the spouses that are joining the teacher as well. I need to ensure that you're not going to get there, be rattled, find yourself work uh, uh, elsewhere or, um, you know, not be settled in that particular town or area or at the school. We ensure that there's longevity, which is a very big point in the third part of, of what I've mentioned there. Once we've managed to find a great school, we'd then be able to apply for the respective visa. Now, many of you may want to apply for a skilled visa. Many of you want to apply for a working visa. I'm not going to get into formalities of the working visa and the costs and the steps of that. This is mainly really going to be the touching on teachers, the demand, 
the route, the steps, etc. Um, so speak to your agent, speak to your consultant uh, at New World Immigration and understand which pathway you qualify for. But whether you want to go ahead with the first step of your skilled visa or whether you want to apply for your working visa, get your skills assessment on the go as quick as possible with our team. Before I go over to the next and final point, Robbie, do you mind um, if we answer one or two questions um, that our viewers have? So um, Natasha asked a, a, a question uh, with regards to, she's a single parent, she's got a 12 year old and a 60 year old accompanying her. She's worried about um, what the tax implications would be for a teacher earning dollars in Australia and how that would impact her her life there. Natasha, it's a really good question. And um, that actually brings me back. And I, I don't want to get too technical with this answer. So I'm going to try and keep it brief. Um, but to also to try and give you some context to it. You need to understand the type of visa you qualify for. If someone is going over on a skilled visa, which we generally want to process, your income taxes are a lot lower. If you're earning in the bracket of what a teacher earns, the difference between going over as a teacher on a working visa, which is a sponsored working visa, which many of you have, are, are familiar with, and comparing it to a skilled visa, you are earning approximately ten to $12,000 more just because of your income taxes. So you get taxed far less on a skilled visa than what you would be on a working visa. So those of you that are going over with families, those of you that are going over with kids, I would suggest rather focusing on the skilled visa because it gives you free healthcare. It gives you free schooling. So Natasha, your two kids would essentially go to school for free. You'd have free healthcare. Your interest rates as well would be lower. So having stability like buying a house and a car, um, a family home, you know, those sorts of things that would be more affordable. But to get to your question, your income taxes are far less. Sean, what would be your, like, if, your question. If, if you had to describe, based on your experience, what the most ideal route would be for someone wanting to live in Australia, wanting to get over relatively fast, but also wanting to secure their future there and taking advantage of all the things that you just mentioned now. How, how would you describe the perfect route that you would love to see your client take to achieve those two short-term and long-term goals? Okay. So I'll give you an example. We are placing two teachers at the moment um, in Western Melbourne as well. Uh, it's a different school to the school that I, I was referring to earlier on. But these two teachers are going to go over on working visas to get them there quicker. It also costs them less going over on a working visa because a large portion of the expenses that they would incur to get there would be covered by the employer. So first step is getting your skills assessment done. This is a self-funded process. A school won't pay for it, unfortunately. A school essentially won't pay to get you on par with their standards. It is something that you would need to do within your own um, capacity. But to get to your, your, your question, Robbie, um, the, the, the perfect example would be to try and get into Australia on a working visa, which we'd be able to help you with. You can get into Australia quicker. That can happen anywhere between three and six months, depending on the job availability, your standard, where you're looking to go, a number of different factors. But get you into Australia on a working visa. From Australia, you're earning Australian dollars. Now, the skilled visa would be more affordable for you to pay for. Instead of using RANDs or um, you know, different currencies in, 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 in whichever country you're applying from, trying to get into Australia on a working visa, earning Australian dollars, and then paying for permanent residency or your skilled visa from that side, which you can, I, I can confidently say, that you can get that done within a year of being in Australia. 
I suppose so, you want that freedom. You want that freedom um, at some point to uh, to get permanent residency status or residency status, and then have the ability to move freely around Australia. Absolutely. Um, you know, so beside having free healthcare and free schooling, lower interest rates, income taxes, these sorts of things, um, the quicker you get permanent residency, like Robbie mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, you've got freedom of movement. Um, it doesn't tie you down to a single employer, but it also gives you the gateway of applying for citizenship, which many of you ultimately would want. It gives you and your family access to the world, whether you'd like to travel to Europe or to New Zealand or to the Americas, it gives you access and, and easier travel um, uh, pathways of, of going to first world countries. So Sean Risha Singh uh, asks, um, I'm a foundation phase early childhood development educator with a bachelor's of education degree. Um, wow, I'm that's a title. Wanted, huh? <laughs> I'm assuming if she wants to know if she would qualify um, for this um, for this process. So foundation phase teachers are among the most sought after professions when applying for permanent residency. In December, mid-December of 2023, um, I personally had 22 early childhood teachers receive um, invites to apply for direct permanent residency, and they were all early childhood teachers. Uh, a number of my colleagues at New World had secondary phase teachers as well, but there was a huge demand for early childhood teachers. So I would recommend going to speak with your consultant or your agent, go through a quick points assessment, understand whether or not you and your family would qualify for it, and start applying and, and moving ahead with your first stage, um, which is the skills assessment. So yeah, to, to answer your question, there is a high probability that you'd be able to do that, but you would still need to go through an independent assessment to see and, and make sure you qualify. Elliot Kumi uh, asks, I would like to know if a teacher from Ghana can be welcomed in Australia. Absolutely, Elliot. Um, we've gotten teachers from um, recently Kenya. Um, there's a huge group of teachers that I'm getting into Australia. It's actually a, a really large group of friends and fa uh, um, family friends. So cousins and aunts. and They, they, have, they all know one another. Um, so it's been it's been amazing. Ghana being a huge, um, uh, uh, you know, um, intake of teachers that we've now started seeing in Australia as well. I would say me starting because I've only recruited teachers at least within the last two, two and a half years. But there has been a huge uh, number of Ghanaian teachers. Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest thing is, is that it doesn't boil down to your passport. Whether you're from Zim, whether you're from Nigeria, whether you're from New Zealand, whether you're from Portugal, it doesn't matter what passport you hold. What they're looking at is to make sure that you are proficient to superior in English. They need to make sure that you're English speaking. That is one of the most important things. The second important thing is to make sure that you have the qualifications they require, which would be either a bachelor's degree in education or a postgrad certificate in education. Being under the age of 45 is also a major positive in applying for permanent residency, but your passport is not something that schools nor the Australian government would have a negative effect on. There's lots of questions. Thanks, Nicole, uh, who's one of our amazing consultants. She's manning the chat here and frantically on answering some questions. Um, Thank you, that Nicole. Are <laughs> that are coming in here. Guys, so um, whether you have recently spoken to us or whether you've been in the wilderness a bit um, and you haven't spoken to us uh, for quite some time, um, you all have a dedicated consultant at New World Immigration. Every single one of you that are attending this webinar have a consultant that's assigned to you. Uh, what we'll be doing is uh, probably tomorrow morning, we'll be emailing every single one of you. And for those that missed the webinar as well, 
Um, I will be emailing you a recording of the webinar together with um, the details of your consultant that is assigned to deal with your particular case. And feel free to ask them any questions before uh, deciding to make the move. Um, but yeah, each, each one of you have a consultant uh, attached to your profiles. Bobby, I'm happy to answer two or three more questions. Okay, I'm just going to take a flyer here and just like read one here. Okay, what is the minimum working experience required to be able to qualify? Does my work experience before getting the bachelor's degree count towards that work experience? Very good question, I would say. Yes, it does. So your work experience prior to qualifying would allow you to apply for work in Australia. It is, however, different if you're applying for permanent residency because there is a points assessment that now applies. A working visa, there's no points assessment. So the points assessment does not apply. When you're applying for a skilled visa or the permanent residency, there's a points assessment. And if you would like to try and score as many points as possible, you score a large amount of points based on work experience, which is then only factored in once you've qualified. So post-qualification work experience. But in saying that, as, as, as you've seen in my answer, it's not just a straightforward answer. I've placed two teachers in Australia, a teacher who had zero work experience. Most of her career has been admin in admin. And then she went into full-time studies to complete her B.Ed. Um, and she had applied for a skilled visa with zero work experience. And we managed to place her. Her annual salary starting was $81,000 per annum. And if I am I correct in remembering that her superannuation was 9% on top of her annual income, um, the school also helped her with a small relocation allowance. So the answer can be yes and no. It's very unique to your profile. I'd recommend reaching out to your consultant and just getting clarity on that. Sean, one last question from Lauren. Um, she yeah. asks, do teachers that have qualifications from UNISA qualify? I know that some Asian countries no longer see UNISA as an accredited university. Luckily, Australia is not Asian. So <laughs> the, and nothing against Asian countries. Um, a large percentage of our teachers qualify through UNISA. Um, we've actually got a direct contact at UNISA to obtain certain documentation because it was quite a difficult thing for many teachers that were either teaching in South Korea or whether they're in, I don't know, in Dubai or in, you know, some Asian country. They've often struggled to get um, documents from UNISA. So we've actually got a direct contact, um, you know, once on board, we'd be able to help you with that particular step. But UNISA, PGCE, as well as B-Aids, they are uh, recognized. You'd be fine. Lisa Marie, no need to assign a consultant to me. I'm already working with Sean and Bronwyn. Excellent stuff, Lisa. I'm sure if you had the platform, you would tell everyone what an amazing experience Bronwyn is and insanely good case manager um uh, in fact the whole Lisa Australian Marie team... actually recently sent Bronwyn a gift for her birthday actually it landed on my desk the other day Bronwyn was off with her friends uh on a week's <laughs> holiday and um I actually got the gift thank you Lisa really appreciate that <laughs> awesome I That's didn't awesome. take it home I promise I gave it to Bronwyn well Australian <laughs> team gets a lot of gifts like they like every day this like Ned Florist is a, coming to our offices um, Sean, okay, so guys, there's a lot of questions coming through and I'm reading through each one of them and they are all brilliant questions. Um, what I would suggest you do is take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one, um, um, feature that we have at NWI. You've got an assigned consultant. They are at your beck and call um, through WhatsApp, phone call, email. Um, they are there to help you. We've employed them to assist you. Um, so we've got 10 of them. So please feel free to respond to the email that we're going to send you tomorrow um, with steps on how to get started with your applications. Um, and you'll see the details of those consultants. And, and please ask them the questions that you are um, putting forward here. There's so many good questions and I wish we had time to go through all of them, but they're just piling in. Um, but yeah, tomorrow you can get those answers, not a problem.
Ladies and gentlemen, just ending off on tonight's webinar. Um, and again, before I end off this, um, what I'm about to say, it, it, it's been an incredible uh, journey for many of you that I've worked with um, thus far. And we're really looking forward to placing each and every one of you and, and hearing the success stories um, that, that you that you will have. Um, and I really admire and take my hat off to the teachers that have, you know, put their foot down and enough is enough. And, you know, they've made the call to make this happen. I know, and unfortunately, you know, personal circumstance and matters and procrastination and so on and so forth, you know, can, can um, you know, uh, play a big role in, in people moving forward to this. But when you start the process, you're not climbing onto a flight, packing your bags, moving your dogs into kennels and off they go, right? The start off with, like anything else in life, it starts off with a first step. Make contact with your consultant. Reach out to my team on the email address that you see in front of you, teachers at nwivisas.com. And of course, we'll help you. But start with the preparation process of your teaching portfolio. Again, I'd like to make it clear that when we start this process, you're not getting onto a flight. You're not having to find housing. You're not having to understand your family doctor's contact details. You don't have to understand all of that right now. We will get to that point, I can assure you. We've done this thousands of times. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we'll break it down into small, manageable, bite-sized stages in order for you and your family and your kids to, to process everything that goes on. I would highly recommend that if you're looking to get into Australia from either the third or fourth term of this year, those of you that are quite eager in getting over, start with your paperwork as soon as you possibly can. And then those that are also looking to get in from the first term of next year, start with your paperwork. There will be a delay in getting that paperwork processed because more and more teachers have started applying. It will create a backlog get on with that as quick as possible. Another thing and final thing that I'd also like to make mention of the fact that Australia, as I've mentioned earlier on, there is a massive demand. But we cannot be naive and think that that demand is always going to be there. The demand will be met at some point, which we don't know when that will happen. We don't believe it will happen anytime soon, but it is going to happen. Try and put yourself in the best position possible to apply for the vacancies that are offering the highest amount of salaries right now. You want to create stability for your family, your kids, yourself as a professional. The sooner you get your skills assessment on the go, the quicker you can finalize it and the quicker we can start applying for jobs across Australia. Final points, ladies and gentlemen, those that have joined tonight's webinar, I would reach out to your consultant and those of you that have a pen and paper, write down what I'm going to say now and reference this because your consultants, once they've qualified you and they give you the thumbs up, they would be able to give you a packaged and an arranged packaged um, uh, a breakdown of the financials of the steps that you would go through and we'd be able to manage a package to accommodate you financially. So the, the 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 reference that you would need to put on the email is rec, as in R-E-C, teachers, so rec teachers, reference that in your email to your consultant and they know where the conversation is um, going to go with wanting to understand the financial aspects of this process. And they'd be able to put a package together for you guys. Sean's, trying to, say that you, Sean's, trying, to say, Sean's trying to say that you can get a nice deal if you <laughs> reference this webinar. <laughs> <laughs> Those that have made the effort to join us this evening, we definitely would like to accommodate them. Absolutely. 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us this evening. It's been a fantastic turnout. I think we had a little over 270 teachers that have joined us. 
Yeah. It's been really incredible. Um, and yes, we have uh, recorded tonight's webinar, which we'll be sharing to each and every one of you as well, just so you can reference again and perhaps go through um, the next evening or tomorrow evening, whatever the case might be. We look forward to working with each and every one of you. We'll break it down step by step, as I mentioned earlier on and uh, make this as uh, achievable as possible. Have yourselves a wonderful evening. Robbie, thank you so much. Nicole, thank, thank you. Pleasure. Everyone at New World Immigration, thank you guys. Really appreciate it. See you soon. Have a good evening and goodbye. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.